like a I don't know what the right word is. A monk? <laughs> no, that's not right. Right? Okay. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Brrr, Talking Nerdy. This is episode 12. Wow. Woo! We are climbing up the episodes, man. Dang. This is yeah, we're getting far farther than uh, you know, Farther than I thought we were going to go, because this was obviously like a trial, see how it goes. See how long we can um, entertain each other with. Yeah. <laughs> see if we can keep talking about nerdy stuff. Luckily, there's just so much that keeps coming out, mm-hmm. keeps us motivated, coming back to talk to you guys, sharing it with all, uh, with y'all, and uh, maybe you're learning something, maybe you already knew, but it's fun. Hope you're enjoying it. We're having fun along this ride. Um, sorry for my attire. I was in the shower, heard a knock on the door. It was Colby. He's like, hey, man, it's time to start recording Talking Nerdy. Well, crap. Let me just get out of the shower, throw a robe on, and let's do this thing. I drew. I dried his hair real quick. Just, just dried it real quick so he could get ready. This is what it looks like without a hat on. Mm-hmm. Looks good, huh? <laughs> yeah. Drives all the girls wild. <laughs> just Tiffany. Right? Just, just Tiff. Just T-Dog. Just T-Bird. So, um... Instead of a joke, I didn't have a joke ready. Uh, I was going to do something a little bit different because on the 17th, 17th, the 17th is the release of Witcher season two. You threw me off completely there. Yeah, dude. Right. You didn't even, there was, you didn't know anything about that. No, I thought you were going to say the best thing that's coming out on the 17th. That is also Spider-Man No Way Home. Thank you. Two big things dropping on uh, Friday the 17th. Two big things. One one of which you already have tickets to go I do. see. I got tickets tonight. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have to do that too. I'm gonna have to let Tiff know we're gonna go watch that movie. You got kids now. You gotta you gotta prepare get a now. babysitter. You have to get a babysitter. Yep. Yep. It's way different game now. Uh, big di- big time different game. You gotta be responsible. <laughs> ain't nobody ain't nobody got time to be responsible. Not when Spider Man's coming out, dude. Right? I'm so excited for that. Yeah. Are you gonna watch it twice? I, it'll be hard when you have kids it's a little bit harder yeah if I was you know young once it comes out on Disney Plus you'll watch it oh, a thousand we'll times watch it a thousand times yeah yeah but I now, you that. know once you have kids it's harder to yeah. go back and forth and, you know because like we were saying earlier like we both would go you used to go to like midnight showings mm-hmm. yep and when's the last Those midnight Thursday pre-screenings mm-hmm. and it's usually pretty late like 11 midnight whatever mm-hmm. yeah can't do that now nope Oh got man, a job. Yeah, <laughs> gotta get up in the morning, <laughs> dude. Now when I get li- like no sleep, and I say no sleep is like four or three hours, whatever the case may be, I am just so sluggish. Whereas before, it wouldn't have mattered, right? You could have an all nighter. I, I, there's no way I could do an all nighter nowadays. One day, right? one day you'll you'll grow up. <laughs> Can you do an all nighter? We are, me and my kids, my older two boys, we are going to try to do an all-nighter. I said they can do whatever they want. Um, um, December a, 31st. Oh, you're not working the next day. Nope. <laughs> it's a Friday night. It's a, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. So what's going to happen is. But, I mean, on a work night, could you do it? If I absolutely had to, yeah. Oh, okay. It'd be yeah. tough, but yeah, I could do it. I mean, you, you're good until, like, if you get over that, like, three to four stage, you're good. Right. And then you hit that wall. And then you can make it to about two, I think, in the afternoon. And then you really hit a wall. Yeah. And then you're done. You are done. There's nothing happening you, after that. You, if, <laughs> as long as you get over those little hurdles, you're good. But <laughs> yeah, so we're doing the all nighter. And what's gonna happen is, I told the boys we can stay up late, watch movies, do whatever, have the iPads, whatever you want to do. But what's gonna happen is we're, Rachel's gonna want to go to a party. Mm. And then on the drive home, the boys are gonna fall asleep. That's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, 100%. And I'm going to say, I don't want to go to the party. She'll say, you have to go to the party. And so we're going to go to a party because I want to. <laughs> and the boys are going to fall asleep and they're going to take me the next day. So It's going to be dark. They're going to be in the back seat. The mm-hmm. vibration of the car, mm-hmm. they're going to be out. Yep. That's yep. exactly what's going to happen. Yep. And then dad wins. Stayed up later than them. But, I, you know, I want to see if they could do it. Oh, gotcha. Is it all three? Oh, not the little one. Okay. Not the gotcha. He's but not. but the other two are gonna do it. Oh yeah, they got gotcha. you. Try, I'm gonna try. That's cool. Yeah, the oldest isn't gonna make it. The middle one might make it. <laughs> Energy for days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, yeah. So instead of a joke, I was gonna do something a little bit different. You haven't seen The Witcher season one. I have not. You made me do watch a different show instead, which I'm okay with because okay. yeah, that show's okay. great too. Okay. This one uh, needs probably needs to be right after that show. 
<laughs> I'm watching like three shows right now. No, I know. Fin- finish this one. And then when, once you clear up a spot. Clear up a spot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. four shows now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Clear up a spot for yep. The Witcher. For The Witcher, season one. Kay. There's only eight episodes, I believe. How long? An hour. Each? Like an hour full? Or is this an hour like with commercials? I guess it's commercials no, not a thing anymore. Yeah, no, no. It's a Netflix show. Oh, okay. So you can binge it. But uh, mm, not, not as fun. I do honestly actually think that some of the episodes are a little longer. I don't think they're st- like static an hour. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, instead of doing a joke, I was going to open it with the, I was going to sing the, uh, <laughs> just a, just a little jingle from the Witcher because I am honestly so excited for season two. I can't, I'm, I'm so glad that it comes out in just a few days, uh, at the time of this recording. Toss a coin to your Witcher, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, whoa. Yeah, we can. That's pretty good, though. Thank you. That was that was that took a lot of guts because I would never ever sing in front of you. It's yeah. That was very well done. Well done. Well done. I'm I'm gonna show you somebody's cover of it, and I think we can get away with showing this. All right, so um, I'm gonna give you just a tad bit of context because watching this, I realized you have nothing to relate it nothing. to. Nothing. <laughs> Right, so it's just a song at that point. Um, so The Witcher is so amazing. Um, so this guy, uh, I forgot the actor who plays him, um, but that's okay. So The Witcher, this guy, uh, Ger- Geralt, uh, it's spelled like Geralt the, with a T. Yeah, I got you. Right? Geralt, yeah. But Geralt uh, of Rivia. So he is, um, he's a Witcher. So his job is to. Uh, like slay beasts, magical okay. beasts in the world. And so it's set like medieval times. And so nobody else can really battle these beasts. They they try, they die, whatever. Um, but the Witcher is just so powerful and he can take them down. So the first or second episode of the first season, it's it's following him. It's showing he's kind of like a mercenary. Yeah. He's He kind of feels invincible. So he's just going town to town whenever somebody mm-hmm. says they have monster problems. And for a fee, he's like, I'll, I'll take care of like it. Like Van Helsing. Right. Yep. 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 Um, and so he goes to this town and there's a squire there who is kind of running out of material and whatnot. So he's like, I want to follow you, Witcher, because your life's going to be exciting. You you just you be, uh, slay beasts and stuff. And I want to write a song. And Geralt's just like, get out of here. Like, don't even follow me. Um, he just wants to drink and kill monsters um, and whatnot. But so they f- they they get this like story that they need to go out to this field and it seems unbelievable to him so he's thinking he's going to get out there and just see like humans just terrorizing the town Mm -hmm. no it's actually like uh, an issue that needs to be addressed and uh well he gets the living snot kicked out of him and uh the squire almost dies actually too and so when it's all done you know the witchers just beat to heck and there really wasn't like a win-win it was kind of like a come to an understanding with the with the mythical creatures Mm -hmm. um but whatever you know the witcher's bleeding he's sore he's tired he's pissed off and uh the squire that's with him he just he's like he's got his little ukulele or whatever and he just starts singing that song and the witcher's you know he's just like what are you doing and he's just like i'm I'm telling your tale and and he's like i don't like he just got his butt kicked he's like this isn't a tale that i want Mm -hmm. told and he's like ah whatever so he's like he sings that song and uh, he kind of makes it sound a little more dramatic than the battle was and kind of glorifies it. Um, but it's just, it's a really funny part in the show. And that kind of becomes... Uh, it's theme song? The theme song, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Toss a coin to your Witcher. Pretty soon it'll be toss a Bitcoin to the Witcher. Bitcoin, you think so? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, you, sh- you should check it out. It's, it's Maybe, pretty, we'll see. It's a It's an adult show. Uh, kind of along the lines of Game of Thrones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe it's not a you know it takes me a while. Like how long did you tell me to do watch the Expanse? I know, and you're just now doing it, but that's yes. okay. Because what do you think? Let's just roll right into that. The, the Expanse. Expanse. You're on season one. Season Six one. just dropped. Six just dropped. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I'm a little confused on what the heck's going on. 
you got Mars, you got the UN. Is UN the same as Earth? Yep. Okay. So you got Mars, UN, and the Belters. And then you have the A AIOs or APO. APOs. Those guys, I think, are. So I'm trying to figure out who's on whose side. Because right. it seems like there's a lot of hidden things behind the scenes that I don't know yet. This, How many episodes are you in? I fell asleep last night to an episode. So I don't know exactly what episode I'm on. <laughs> gotcha. Like five or six ish there. I'm around there. I so, passed out like 9.30 last night, so I don't... Oh, okay. Have they gone out to the rock um, that's like kind of has a radio broadcast on it? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. So the story is going to take a turn, a huge turn that kind of sets up what the show's actually about. Okay. Because right now you're following almost like a murder mystery type thing. I was, and then he got like almost killed. The detective? The detective got racked. Yeah, he got saved by his friend. But, yeah, he almost got killed. And then they find out who is the leader. I think the leader of the APO is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Maybe I'm past that part. Y- no, yeah, well, okay, because the detective, something happens to the detective again. He gets fired. Again. Oh, that's where you're at. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're, um, so the whole first season is like a murder mystery type show. Mm-hmm. Like Carbon, Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon, very much Reminded so. Reminded me of that. And I thought... So it was hard for me to kind of get into it with the first season. I did watch it. It was getting interesting, especially once you get to the end. Um, but I was I was like, okay, I don't know if this is like my type of show. Luckily, for better or for worse, some people might agree or disagree, um, the rest of the seasons are not like the first season. Okay. Yep. That whole murder mystery type thing is gone. Um, the uh, detective, uh, what's his name of the show? Um. Oh dang it! It took it away. Detective Jane, Joseph. Joseph oh, Thomas Fies. Jane. <laughs> Detective uh, Miller. Miller. That's what they call him, yep. Miller. Um. Uh, yeah. So Detective Miller is still in the show, just in a different way. Um. And I don't want to spoil it, but I will say that the show plays very heavy on the politics of Earth, Mars. And the belt, uh, okay. a, uh, APO or whatever. Yeah, because yeah, the UN girl, her voice, very raspy. Very raspy. Yeah, she's. You can tell she is just like, if I had to compare her to, she is Cersei. She is the Cersei of the show. She is killing people and setting them up to be killed all the time. So there, there is huge character swings in the show. Um, so you will hate her. Love her I don't think I'll and love hate her. her. I don't think I'll love her. Kind ever. of. It not so much, I mean, I know I her voice even, is hard to get past, but her actions do change. Okay. I don't and even know if I like the main character yet. Holden? Yeah, I don't know. Right? Just too I know he I know the whole thing was his fault. I get it, but he's just too he's too bossy. Too bossy. Well, he's he's also gonna have a dynamic change. Um and he kind of becomes the person you follow that you want to like because he's the main character, but you end up hating and then hating more and then hating more and then understanding with the character and being like, okay, he's done what he's had to do. Okay. Not because of childhood trauma or anything like that, but because he kind of, he sees what's happening in a different light than everybody else. Okay. Um, my question as, as far as like characters, mm-hmm. um, early on, what are your thoughts on Amos? Amos, the the brute. The br- yep, yep, the military brute. guy, yeah. Um he seems just like a brute, but he seems to I think like him and what Naomi were dating or something like that maybe. Uh, partially. Yeah, he's kind of like her um almost like uh the Wheel of Time how the uh Aes Sedai have the mm-hmm. whatever they're called wielders or whatever. Um right? Yeah. I can't yeah. remember what they're called. The people that uh, protect them, protect warders, them. warders. That's right. So Amos is kind of like uh, Naomi's warder. Okay. I mean, he's. She didn't want to disappoint him. She said, and then. But he's, he must be just a fierce warrior because, like, they sent him down alone to do stuff, and he just comes back like nothing. He's very much a sociopath. Okay. Right. Just emotionless. Yep. yep. Right. Uh, and that's going to be a big part of his character. And I guarantee you, he will be your favorite character to watch him. Yep. Uh, but I, but I only bring that part up because he does recognize he, he starts to f- wonder 
when, when things happen, he sees everybody being emotional to mm-hmm. things and he starts to internalize and wonder why he doesn't feel the same th- ways that other people feel when things happen. And then uh, he kind of gets this little hero arc where, uh, and I'm not spoiling anything because this this is just something you will see. And I'll forget right after everything. Ex- exactly. <laughs> but but he kind of, he knows he's like a sociopath, emotionless, just an empty vessel. And he kind of goes on this path of uh, trying to be more empathetic. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if they've ever, I don't know if I've ever seen a show other than Tyrion that has nailed down like uh, quite a character like Amos. Okay. We'll find out, huh? Yeah. yeah I, I, I actually watch it with the subtitles on. Do you? Yeah. Um, you get... I don't know. I might rewatch The Wheel of Time with subtitles on. Uh, I didn't realize... Uh, I I, th- I don't remember what I said last time, but we, we are actually watching that show with subtitles on. Oh, good. Yeah. It, it makes... It makes a big difference. It truly does. You, also, because we might, sometimes she'll start crying, the kid, and Tiffany just, will start crying, and then Tiffany will start, start crying. crying. I'll start crying, and, and just, it's like, yeah. all right, we'll just read what they're saying. <laughs> you, you, you get. Yeah, so I started watching the subtitles because I couldn't hear them, and without blasting it certain at certain points, you just read it and go. I got into watching subtitles with Game of Thrones, and then watched some anime with subtitles and stuff like that. So it helps my reading. Gotcha. So, yeah, just uh, definitely hang along for the ride on this okay. one because it's uh, it's super cool. And, and like, you almost appreciate, like, as well as the show, the story they're telling, mm-hmm. um, kind of like the real-world physics that they put into this show. Okay. I don't know. Like, they, they went above and beyond to, to really try and figure out what things would sound like in space, what things would look like when you have burners, uh, like fire explosions, mm-hmm. whatever, in space. Um, and then, like, the physics of blood being suspended yep. in space. There was, there was a pretty gruesome scene. Someone's head got blown off and the blood just kind of <laughs> floated up. And then they finally, like, controlled it. What's the right word? Uh, like, regulated the pressure. Ra- pressure. Yeah, the pressure. Regulated the pressure and it just, like, <laughs> everywhere. And that was that was really cool and disgusting at the same time. So yeah. that was pretty cool. But I don't know. Yeah, they, they kind of seem like every other show you watch, there's a breach. They freak out instantly, sucked out, whatever. This shows they're not as freaked out. They're calmer about it. They right. they know it's a big deal, but they kind of handle it a little bit differently. They kind of because they've been out in space for mm-hmm. a long time. So this is like stuff you'd really have to worry about. Is if a hull broke or something. I mean, that means instant death mm-hmm. if you're not prepared for it. Yeah. So they they seem to handle it a lot better. And but, the uh, they they um, so maybe they've already touched on it. But so Earth has earth gravity right mm-hmm. everything's kind of oh, yeah. in measurements of gravity and whatnot so mars has uh i don't know is it one third earth's gravity something like gotcha. that um and then the belt they're so far out there that they have just such a weak amount of gravity um so they play into like bone density mm-hmm. and stuff like that and that's why if a, a belter comes to earth he's pretty much screwed but flatten out like a pancake yep yeah, I mean, I think they say like his uh his legs would buckle and stuff like that yeah because they show um guy getting there early on and he's like yep yep yeah disgusting it's disgusting (laughs) so no it's it's a cool concept so far i'm not gonna stop watching it right now Mm -hmm. so um, it hasn't done anything it hasn't disappointed it hasn't blown me away it hasn't disappointed me yet so it's 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 intriguing yeah i'll give you that the uh, first season's just a mystery um until you get to the end and and then you know what the show's going to be about and then from season two on it's just kind of like this space ride action pack gotcha gotcha what what um when season six come out uh it came out on the 10th of this month oh have you watched it yet Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm oh you caught up uh yeah yeah well there's only been one episode oh another one's coming out on friday (gasps) on the 17th on the 17th i have the witcher season two and uh the expanse episode two and spider-man and spider-man friday's a busy day (laughs) <laughs> and editing and edit oh that's my edit that, edit day that's yep. your edit day you better not miss that oh man this is gonna, this is gonna be so much going on mm-hmm. um yeah no it's it's an incredible show i'm so glad you're watching it um there is just there's so many cool scenes that i can't wait to talk about with you uh most of them do involve amos and yeah it just i didn't realize how amos many targaryen <laughs> i didn't realize how many people were in this show but yeah there's quite a bit um yeah and then uh so i a show that i'm catching up to you on Mm -hmm. is the wheel of time yep and 
in the last one, I was saying I watched the first and second one, fell asleep during both episodes. That's true. And I, the second one, I was telling Colby before this, when I went to go rewatch it, I realized I actually only made about like five <laughs> minutes into it after the uh, uh, intro thingy. Yep, in the second episode. Yep. So I did not get far, but I rewatched it and watched the third episode. And then watched, I think, most, actually, of the fourth episode. Mm-hmm. And then it was just too late. We had to turn it off. Uh, but I didn't want to. My my, my decision has changed. I'm not going to fall asleep during any more episodes. It is getting so good. Wheel of Time. I'm glad you recommended it. I'm glad it was recommended to you. It was recommended to me by my brother. Yep. And I didn't want to watch it. It didn't look... Like it, what it is. Yeah, I don't know if I've talked said this on air. Have I? Did I mm-hmm. say it on air? I did. Mm-hmm. I said what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I don't like being stuff pushed down my throat. Right. Yeah. Except for, except for pop. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, um, it's better than I thought it was. It definitely reminds me of Lord of the Rings. Like I've gone over a hundred times. Um, where, so it's episode three. Yeah. So... Well, episode two is kind of a big one. Oh, yeah. You didn't see episode two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even realize. It was hard to really talk about it when he's like, yeah, I watched it. But no, I was falling asleep. Yeah. So none of it really stuck. Um, but, ep- I mean, episode two uh, is where they go to the dark city. Or, no. What's it called? Shadow. Logoth. Logoth. Yeah. So. Oh, my tummy. Um, tummy. <laughs> so you start to see that this uh, one power really takes a toll on people um but not only that the main gal uh lorraine she, lorraine, she has a uh an injury moraine oh moraine i'm sorry yeah yeah moraine she has an injury uh from that poison that those torox you know threw a weapon at her pierced trollocs. Her. trollocs i'm just not getting anything right uh just hang with me colby will correct me um but yeah the trolloc threw like a spear or something at her and she got impaled there's poison on it um like some kind of magic and um so she's kind of slowly dying to this Mm -hmm. and they keep getting into situations where she's got to use the one power to save them and she's getting pale she's needing to sleep all the time um and so her her warder warden ward or whatever um is you know he's like just get some sleep and she kind of is like don't go to that dark city or whatever Mm -hmm. he takes her there Takes everybody there because there's an army of Trollocs uh, with the Eyeless mm-hmm. leader. Uh, I think that's actually what they refer to him as. I think, right? I think you're right. Right. Uh, they, I think they say Dark One, but and then also the Eyeless. But he's not like the main Dark One, is he? No. He's no. just like a commander. Yep. I thought so. So this huge horde of Trollocs, and they run faster than horses. They do. They're moving. Yeah, right? And so they're they're after the, this group because the Dark One wants the, uh, the one that's going to be the dragon. Um, probably to set Earth back another thousand years like it did when the previous dragon was uh, alive. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever. So this huge group of Trollocs is after them. And th- in like a last ditch effort to kind of get some sanctum, uh, you know, just a little sanctuary, they go to this dark city. Mm-hmm. They're riding up to it. And I don't want to explain the show. Uh, I don't want to explain it scene by scene, but they get up to this city that's heavily fortified with this giant wall that has a giant split into it. Uh, but the Trollocs won't even go near it because there's dark magic energy around this city. Um, and when they get inside, like, it is a cool-looking city. It is. Right? And it's just, it's eerie because they touch on it, but there's, like, no bugs. There's no birds that fly overhead. Nothing will enter this place. Um, and honestly, when they were camping for the night, I was like, okay, they built up this place for mm-hmm. nothing. Right? Because they, I'm, in my head, I'm like, they safely navigated through the city. They found a spot to camp. They literally haven't bumped into anything. Nothing. And it shows them sleeping. And uh, sleep kind of seems to be their worst enemy at this point in the show. Not in the second episode, but as you continue on. Um, but then it wasn't till the that character. Um, Matt. Matt. Stupid Matt. He's just, yeah, he is the problem child in this show. Um, where is this character? Oh. Wow, he looks different there. I know. Uh, but yeah, so Matt Calthorn, Calthorn, um, he wakes up and he's kind of seeing these visions. You know, the the darkness is calling out to him, and he gets that dagger. And the whole time, I was actually like, me and Tiff both were like, "Don't do it." You know, that that guy said, uh, Lance said, "Don't touch anything here." Don't touch anything. He grabs the dagger, and now you see the evil in the city, mm-hmm. and it is just this dark 
darkness that spreads across the surfaces of the city and and it shows one of the horses standing there and it just it turns you into ash and yep. you just it's like uh if thanos could spread a virus it would be that yep it was it was nasty yeah and then you're like freaking matt freaking matt always and then everybody's running for their life everybody jumps over the city walls into the water um except for L- moraine and uh land mm-hmm. they ride out into the sunset yep they ride out everyone's and then instantly everyone's split up yep and that right there i was like okay this is lord of the rings because like the fellowship of the ring they all get split up at the beginning and they're all in like two packs of two mm-hmm. and they're all in packs of two now you have um perrin with oh what's her name Egwin? No. Yeah. Yeah. Egwin? 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 <laughs> Those so two are together. Matt and uh, Rand are together. And then um, Lon and Moraine are together. So. Yep. And she went in with, they went in with all four of them and now they're uh, from, with none of them. So they don't know if any of them lived or any of them died. Mm-hmm. So they're freaking out a little bit, kind of, that the city consumed them a little bit. Yep. Yep. And then we start watching them in their own travels. Their own travels. They're all dealing with different things. Mm-hmm. Definitely different things. Yep. Um, yeah. So I mean, Lan and uh, Moraine. You know, he's trying to take care of her. They end up bumping into Nanave, Nanive. No, yeah. it's Nanive. Nanive. And uh, she's like a healer, but you know, she can't heal this. This is like a dark magic mm-hmm. that. She's not ready for this. She's never seen this. Never seen this. So, yeah. So, their little story arc, he's trying to get her healed. They meet Nanive to try and help, and it's just not working. Um, you have Perrin and uh, who's he teamed up with? Egwene. 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 That doesn't sound right. I know. Egwene. Egwene. Her. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh Perrin and Egwene are teamed up and, and uh they end up so they, they get cha- they he has a weird little thing going on because he, he does. He got injured on his leg by one of the t- uh Torok. Mm-hmm. Torok, Torok? Something. Trollocs. Trollocs. <laughs> <Gosh. laughs> I was thinking of the video get, game Torok. Eventually. Yeah, Trolloc. All right. I'll think of like frolicking, but Trolloc. Frolicking through the forest. Yeah. <laughs> but uh so Perrin in this in this show. He gets he sustains an injury from a trollock and Just it's a second. Keep oh, going. Keep yeah, going. Right. I just wanted to feel. See if it's dry. Yeah, you I just got wanted it. to touch it. <laughs> um and the weird thing though is when he's in the woods, he kinda has this like connection to wolves. Mm-hmm. Um and maybe you've seen something that I haven't seen, but I have. Okay. <laughs> but uh he he kinda he's getting water or something, and there's like wolves on every side of him. And one of them comes up and licks that wound, and then they all take off. Well, a little bit later, him and Egwene are they're on this long walk, like over mountains into deserts. And as soon as they get into the desert plains, like they're being what seems like hunted down by wolves. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of is portraying it like the wolves are guiding them to where they need to go. Yep, I think the wolves are guiding them to where they need to go. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. On that part. Okay. And then they find the cool, the cool. Gypsies. Gypsies, yeah. I forgot gypsies. what they call themselves, but the, they're gypsies. They're leafs. They have a pa- they're pacifists, but they're the way of the leaf. The way of the leaf, yeah. They just follow the way of the leaf. And uh, they're kind of an interesting group themselves. They are a bunch of hippies. Bunch of hippies. Nothing wrong against hippies, but they're just like a lot of hippies. <laughs> a lot. I do like that one kid, and it might be that one. Mm-hmm, it is. Yeah, so he's kind of a... An interesting character. Yeah, Rachel said he's very attractive. Oh, really? Is it because mm-hmm. his eyes are different colors? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's the weirdo. Uh, <laughs> she looks like she's from the 50s. Um, but yeah, no, he's kind of an interesting character because he almost is like a... If you could throw like the Joker character into this show, you don't know if he's innocent mm-hmm. or evil, but he loves toying with his words when he's talking to you. Um and so he's kind of like this this wild card, at least where I'm at. Uh, but he brings a little excitement to the gypsy group. Um, and then you get, I think, probably the coolest branch off is between Matt and Rand. Yep. Because they stumble into that, that mining town. Yep, that dirty mining town. Dirty mining town. And they they go into this bar, and they their first kind of intro to this bar is that you know there's a guy that gets on stage and he's singing and and whatnot well um 
who is this character? I better name him. Give him money to the Witcher. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. What he, oh, that's what he is. He's a Witcher. Toss a coin to your Witcher. Mm-hmm. Um, so they meet this guy named Thorn, and he's uh, he just comes off as this guy who's... Thom. Thom? Thom. Oh, that's right. That's not an R. Yeah, Thom. Okay. Tom, whatever. Tom. Tom, Tom. with the H. Uh, and so he's just, he's your drunk pub guy who sings songs. But, uh, when Matt meets up with him, uh, he gets his coin stolen and Thom ends up having that, that coin and whatnot. And so that's their first introduction to this guy. So not a good one. Well, they, now that money has been taken from them, they kind of work at the bar, uh, for this gal who I thought would be a bigger character, but she, she did set things off. Dana. Dana. Um, so they're doing stuff for her at the bar, but at the same time, like Matt and, uh, Rand are, are having this huge, dis- like they're just, their chemistry isn't working. And it's mostly because of Matt's kind of struggling internally. Now that he's picked up that dagger, he's mm-hmm. carried a little bit of this darkness with him. It's in him. It's in him. And he's hallucinating. He's, he's just being facetious and he's just, yeah, he, he, you can tell there's something wrong with him. Yeah, I compare it when I was watching it. I actually was telling Tiff. I compare it to um, Anakin's storyline where he wants to be good, but now he's battling with all these like bad thoughts and and slips down this dark path to become Vader. Um, it compare pe- it to Gollum, or Gollum. That's more like a Jackal and Hyde situation, <laughs> where you just never know, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so there, there's this cool, but this is like where I feel is the coolest part because those two that have the most doubt about the dragon mm-hmm. get confirmation by someone that is outside of their group. Yep. Right? Dana, who just seems like a barkeep, um, ends up trap, trying to trap them and really in full circle like um, solidifies everything Marina has been saying. Yep. Right, kind of sets the fuse. She tells them that there's a dragon that could save the earth or destroy it, and one of these main characters is going to be the dragon. Well, it's not until Dana, this barkeep, is just like, I've been in touch with these dark ones, and I'm se- and the dark one knows that the dragon is one of you guys, and so she's like, she's hashing out all the stuff that they have doubt in their head, but then she lets them know, I've contacted the dark ones, and they're sending an eyeless here with the Trollocs mm-hmm. to, to capture them. And so now they're like, holy crap. They they just escaped the Trollocs uh, and this dark energy uh, from that town. But they're uh, you can tell they're tired of running mm-hmm. at this point because everything is running. Yep. Um, and so I don't want to give away what happens right after that. but Bad stuff happens. Bad stuff happens, and they end up teaming up with Thom. Oh. Um, and... And then there's a little bit of a twist. We were kind of talking about that. There's a little bit of a twist there, too, now that Thom is part of the group. Yeah, all of a sudden he's part of the group. <laughs> he got he, he included so himself pretty quickly. Watching it, <clears throat> you think he's bad, then you think he's good. Mm-hmm. Then thinking about it again, I think he's bad. Okay, so you're not far enough to know. Like, you haven't seen... Correct. I'm. Okay. St- I'm uh, where you're at. Okay. I think he's still bad. Okay. Because he did. He he toys that line, but he also gives you when he talks about his son. Yeah. He gives you kind of a reason for the way he is. I get that. Yeah. And he's so open, unless it's all lies. I don't know. I don't know yet. It's kind of hard to say what it, what happens without giving it away to them as well. Right. 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 I mean, you definitely need to watch the show. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just feel like. I mean, if you wanted to gain someone's trust, if someone's trying to kill you, what's the best way to gain someone's trust? Right. I mean... You take out my enemy's enemy and... Yeah. Are they your ally? (laughs) Yeah, no, 100%. And and he's trying... Well, so he he plays that part, uh, helps them out in that situation with an, Mm -hmm. uh, an equal enemy... But then he's also immediately trying to disband Rand and Matt, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they have it hasn't even been a full day, and he's just like, Rand, hey, Matt is uh, psycho. I've seen this before. <laughs> he's getting crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, he, and he's trying to tear him up, and so there, there is that weird like, why, or like, are you trying to tear them up for the right reasons? Because they do show you stuff in the show 
that could say, okay, thumbs on the right. But then it's like, could you go about it differently? Mm-hmm. Right? Like if that was me and I saw that, I'd be like, we need to, and you know about the Aes Sedai, I'd be like, we need to get him to the tower ASAP. But then again, you're like, not really because they'll kill him. There's a good chance that they'll kill him. No, they'll kill him. Right. So I don't know. They I guess. say they'll do trials. I'm not far enough to know if these trials are actually like legit. I'm sure they'll kill him. Right. Yeah. If they find out. Because they don't want the dragon to happen. They are fully, they, they think that the next dragon is going to set the earth back a th- uh, thousand years. Or they at least want to have control of the dragon. Yep. yep. To maybe. And so you have the Aes Sedai wanting control of the mm-hmm. dragon, and then you have the dark one that wants control of the dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's kind of like these two forces fighting for the, the ultimate power. But then again, is the ultimate power going to want to join one of these sides even? Might be its own thing. Maybe its own thing. Might be like a Daenerys Targaryen. Uh huh. Right. Uh-huh. That's where I'm starting to go because everyone's like, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to save the world, but save the world from what? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it's each other. Each other. Yep. I don't know. We'll see. No, I get that. I I could see that. But it is uh, it's getting good and it's getting to the point where I'm feeling like more lore is being pulled from the books. Hmm. There's definitely it makes you want to read. Kind of does. Yep. But then. Because now you're getting to the point where they're brushing over stuff, and that's what I like because it's interesting when you don't when it when it's not so simple that you understand everything you're seeing and hearing, mm-hmm. where they're brushing over st- huge storylines like that city. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, the rise and demise of that whole city. Yeah, they just show that in like ten seconds. I mean, like mm-hmm. okay, like five minutes, but like you, there's obviously some huge history in there mm-hmm. that we don't even get to see or understand without going into youtube or um, somewhere on the internet and finding out exactly what happened Mm -hmm. and like what this dagger is Mm -hmm. um the energy so far they haven't really explained it um and then there is something else that they brushed over um oh i I can't remember it right now gotcha but yeah no i mean they're, they're, they're getting to that point where it's just like okay there's just so much information now that we gotta just do little pieces here but it's just like little bait pieces that keep you intrigued mm-hmm no, yeah. it's been good so far. Are we going to go in episode four or are you not in far enough? Uh, we can definitely do episode four because that's kind of a game changer in the show. I, f- I felt like. because I've, I felt like the end of episode three when they actually had to ex- try to escape the tower or the city was kind of like, what the heck? And then they're all separate and you want to see how, I want to see how like their stories are going to. Yeah, that was a game changer. Um, that was absolutely a game changer. But now you have an episode four, somebody claiming. They are the dragon. They are the dragon reborn. Right. And so do you want to talk about that? Like kind of. So Loghain. Mm-hmm. Loghain, they show a little backstory of him and how he, his, him and his, I don't even know if he had an army at that point. He must have had some followers at that point. He does. It doesn't show too many, but then. It doesn't show him, but they, the Aes Sedai do mention that thousands have already started following him. But yes, they do. But that's, I think that's, they say that after he attacks that city. Y- yes. So I don't know. If oh, that's are you talking? You're talking about leading up to that? Yeah, I don't oh, okay, know how okay. many he has at that point. So he's got a. He's, I don't know how how big of army. I'm sure he has a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand, maybe. May I don't know, but yeah, he goes in the city. Pretty much gets the king one on one, and he's a dragon reborn. So he's like an Aes Sedai on steroids. Mm-hmm. Pretty much is how I would describe him. And he and then he's got these two people whispering in him. I think it's good and evil. Pretty much feels like that. Yeah, feels like he's got good and evil, and it's like kill him. I don't know what the other one said. Let him go or something like that. And then he kind of chooses his own path. This, which is kind of why I think the Dragon Reborn is going to kind of choose their own path mm-hmm. because they have good and evil. And it's like I don't want to do either. I want to do my own thing. And then he pretty much sets the guy free. He goes, even my enemies can follow me or something like that. It says something around those lines. Is even my enemies can follow me. And then the next scene, I think it shows that that king has his back after that. I almost feel like because we know. The dragon has to be one of those main characters, yet yet Loghain is so powerful mm-hmm. and so much like what they remember and think the dragon is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I think somebody gave him those powers. You think someone gave him those powers? Maybe the voice that is talking to him, because she does take form for a second as like a wisp. Uh-huh. There's a little bit of a face that's t- that takes place, and to have like a female voice in there, it almost seems like he was given this maybe to draw out the real dragon. Ah, that would make sense. Right. And I haven't read the book, so obviously I could be wrong. Um, but that 
he just he seems so he seems like he's so confident that he is the dragon like he was told he was the dragon and he has all these powers that the Aes Sedai are just so in awe from because they just haven't seen it in so long and it's like how did you get so powerful like did the dark one give this to you or did somebody else give this to you and say like you are the dragon and just know that he's going to go out and well one everybody knows that for males when they use this power it drives them mad and crazy Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like you're not going to have to worry about him for too long maybe give him this power and see if like the real dragon steps up and I think that's I, I never thought about that but I think you're right right it just it feels like that it makes sense and because at the end of episode four I think I think that's what happens and you missed it um, oh gotcha okay okay I I, I think that's what Shoot. happens and I told him I need to watch that tomorrow night I know I, know. Um, I told him that's what happened too because he strikes me as you strip the power away and he strikes me as he was probably a really humble guy uh, almost like maybe you know, he just, even with the bad voices in his head, he still wants to choose the right mm-hmm. choice. And so I think maybe they gave the power to the wrong person, but um, I think he is pure and he, he was just given so much power. Nobody would know what to do with mm-hmm. it. And if you're told you're this like thing that everybody has been talking about would come back at some mm-hmm. point. And then you see the government, quote unquote, all these kingdoms running it, how you would not run it. Yeah. You would try to take them over because you're not doing it. You're not doing it in the wrong way. You think they're doing it wrong, so you want to try to correct the world. You want to, yep, correct the world. You're or, given this power that you can now influence, and mm-hmm. it's just like, I don't like how you're doing this. You're hurting people. I'm gonna make you, you know. And if you had to crack some skulls to do it, I think that's what he said. It'll be better long term. Short term is gonna suck, but long term, I think he's yeah. That makes sense. I right? like it. Very much in the same view. Daenerys thought she was doing the same thing. Yep. Every time she went to New Kingdoms. Yep. I was saving them. Yeah. Nope. Right. <laughs> Enslaving them. Burning them. them. Burn, yeah. Yeah. Right. The dra- And she had no control over the, over the dragons and they nope. were eating and burning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doing whatever they wanted. Yep. But yeah. So that one's interesting. Um, so he does play a big part into the end of episode four then. He does. Okay. He does. And I, I don't know how you. Yeah. Yeah. He Man, I was so close to the end too. I, I wish it wasn't so late. When I watched it, was, it. it, it changes everything. It truly does. Okay, okay. Um, do you have a prediction on who you think the dragon's going to be? No. Okay, and that's honest. I am toying. Well, all right. So this isn't me thinking this. This is information said in the show. Um, all right. So actually, this is also me reading and reading some information from the books. No, 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 no. Um, so the, the dragon is supposed to be a male uh-huh. in this show. They kind of toy that it could be Egwene. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess in the books, like the dragon had to be like a male, mm-hmm. uh, and the Aes Sedai could hold the one power, but only females could use it and not go crazy. Gotcha. In this show, they've added Egwene as like the, you know, it's almost like in star Wars. Now anybody can be a Jedi if you believe. Um, it's it's kind of like broadening that and whatnot, making it a little more modern, I guess. Gotcha. Equal. Um, but if I use that statement that I read about when I was just kind of following up on the show, I'm gonna say it's still probably gonna be one of the guys. Okay. And Egwene will probably be one of the most powerful Aes Sedai. Okay. Um, and at, right now I'm kind of toying between uh, Rand mm-hmm. and Perrin. Okay. And I, I, Matt's not going to be it. Okay. There's no way. Rand, because he's he looks like he would be the main character. Yeah, in right. any show. In, in any show. <laughs> any C-Dub show, he's going to be your, your main guy. But Perrin is... He almost follows like a superhero arc where he loses everything he ever loved. Mm-hmm. And he's got to find strength within himself to overcome things. Gosh, ah, man. Um, I wish you were caught up on the show. Oh, is some of this explained? No, but uh, like I want, I think, I don't know exactly. I think they're all super powerful. They all have powers and and them splitting up is their own journey to find that power. I think their powers are all super powerful because that's why they couldn't tell who the dragon was. Uh, I think they're all very powerful. Oh, yeah. Well, you get to see a little bit of Rand. You get to see a little she strength. She has a huge door, thick mm-hmm. door that, that a man shouldn't be able to, to 
knocked down or whatever. Yep. And he just he he hits it. He realizes he jostles it, and he's just like, huh. Takes a couple steps back, boom, blows the door off. Yep. And Dana's kind of like, holy cow, like this guy's powerful. Uh, I don't I don't know. I have I have an idea who I think it is based on what happened in the end of episode six. Gotcha. I mean, it's probably going to be him. There's a part of me that does want it to be Marcus. I mean, I can tell you or, I don't or, think or, it is. Matt. No. Who don't you think it I is? I don't think it's Marcus. Oh, okay. Then it's got to be him then if it's going to be a dragon. I don't think it's him. What? Mm-mm. What? There's no way. So then you're leaning back to her. I'm leaning. I'm leaning yeah. either between Matt you or think Nineveh. Nineveh? Nin- Nin- Nineveh? Oh, Oh, you're bringing her in. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's a variable I didn't consider. Yeah. Uh, she was the... Healer. F- healer, but she, she would be part of the original five, right? Gosh, she didn't finish episode four. When they were when she came to the town and she said it's like one of you five yeah, or whatever. Yeah, one of you five. You're yeah. Not episode four, yeah. She, oh. Something happens in episode four where you'll know she's one of the fifth. I'll just put it that way. Okay. Sorry. No, but, but they do talk about that in the first episode. They um, do. They say it's one of you five, and they make her come with. Well, they, they, and then they, they yeah, she the splits off, but then Trollocs yeah. happen, and mm-hmm. she gets dragged away by her freaking hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> which her like kind of come back to everything. She's a ba. She is a ba. It cuts. Okay. Okay. All right. So in the show, she gets separated from everybody else. Uh, the Trollocs invade this village, and it's, it's all out war. But uh, she gets taken by the Trollocs. It cuts back to that in the third episode, and you get to see the hell she went through. Mm-hmm. She so it, it starts off in a trolloc. They're these massive kind of mythical beasts, um, and and they're you see this guy. The camera's kind of close, but it's it's kind of panning out a little bit. But um, you see him just dragging something, and he's walking just dragging. And then you see that she, her hair's long braided. Then you see like what's attached to what he's holding is her just being dragged unconscious and then she kind of she comes to while he's dragging Mm -hmm. and so she's smart though because there's two trollocs what the the ones carrying her just drops her he's like okay we got where we're going and so she's just laying there kind of lifeless just taking it all in she's in a lot of pain um you know she's been beaten up and and dragged by her hair but uh she sees these two trollocs and that they're idiots. They are idiots. They're just brute force. They are the, um, what is it called? They are the tracksuit militia in this. <laughs> but <laughs> but stronger, <laughs> but, but <way> dumber. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you see these two Trollocs, and uh, one of them got injured really badly. And instead of aiding each other, you can tell there's no like uh, brotherhood or whatever. There's no bond that these things feel to each other. Um, and one of the healthy Trolloc just ripped right open the, the gut of the injured trollic and just starts going to town eating the guts and whatnot but she sees that as an opportunity to get up quietly and escape and that trollic hears her leave and he's after her and uh they don't like water it's this commonly known thing they don't like deep water because they can't swim um so she goes back to these this um uh, healing water mm-hmm. area it's almost like a sauna sauna yeah and oh, so she's hiding out in the yeah. water and hot tub. Hot tub. It looks like a hot tub. Hot tub. That's what I meant. I meant yeah. hot tub. I said hot tub. <laughs> and uh, the Trollocs like kind of dancing around the water looking for her. And he's like, okay, she's got to be in the water. And he risks it, goes into the water. And she kind of comes up out of the water like a ninja and just. Yeah, she, she did look really cool there. Yeah, dude, that was pretty cool. And then they both, like the Trolloc takes her into the water and you don't see anything for a while. And then you just see blood filling up the pool pretty cool scene it is it's such a cool scene but that's what she had to go through and when you watch it it's a lot more intense than what i'm describing no it's not it's exactly it's so intense like that (laughs) it's so intense but so she's kind of just she's like i want my friends back and so she meets up with lan and maureen and she's like has a knife to lan's throat she's like where's my friends and um she realizes she's got to help them to get to them but then after thinking about it i don't think it's her because she's over 20 wait that's something yeah they said that in the first episode oh, i was kind of in and out falling asleep yeah the, remember they so said they were all born about 20 years ago and all four of those are the same the four people are the same age but then again she's not 20 i don't think because she's older and, and that's why i don't think it's her oh okay i uh, okay i see i see 
I got you. So then, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who the dragon actually is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a big part of the show is trying to figure out. I think they're all very powerful. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think they are. Very powerful. It's an exciting show. Like, if you haven't seen this, Wheel of Time, it's on Amazon. Watch it. It's free on Amazon. It's free. Watch it. Everyone has Amazon. Every Yeah. Yeah. Except for me. (laughs) (laughs) Do you borrow that? (sighs) The bear poop in the woods? (laughs) (laughs) Of course you do. Oh, man. That's cool, though. Um, And then, uh, was there anything more you wanted to touch on Wheel of Time? Um, Recommend watching it. Recommend actually watching it, Justin. I did three finishing it. Yeah. Yeah. Finishing it. So then you can actually catch up with it because then you're going to have so many more questions that we cannot really talk about yet. Yep. I I need to get up there really quick. Um, and then, so I think we should probably cut this episode pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to watch this or save it for the next one? Or what are your thoughts? 10 minute episode, 10 minute video. What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? What time is it? 11 14 what time we start uh we started so we have been recording for 57 oh we're good then okay we'll cut it all right so let's do so so we did a challenge uh like the no laugh challenge and the don't say whoa challenge or whatever it was um those don't really work for us and and really it's i think we're both fair it's not fair once we lost well and we had to go through so many videos to get to something that we like but i think once we throw out that it's a challenge We're going to go too far with it, and it doesn't make for good content, Mm -mm. right? So this isn't a challenge, per se, uh, but I think I found a video that both of us are going to find satisfying, and instead of making it a challenge, I figured we would just honestly say, when we see a clip, if that is a satisfying video. No points are being tallied, but I will have the video up for you to watch with us, and if you're into these, you will be satisfied. You're welcome. I for didn't us know you had you. me on there. Fastest workers doing their job perfectly. <laughs> and I think that's why we both like this kind of stuff or will like this kind of stuff. I find it so satisfying uh, when an employee is doing their job efficiently and timely. I do too. Because it's like seeing a unicorn nowadays. Nobody works. <laughs> Nobody works. So when you see somebody doing their job, it's like, oh my gosh. Like, you don't have to tell them twice. Oh, my gosh. What are you doing? <laughs> this is amazing. Or when they explain why they did it, and you're like, I was just thinking. Wow. <laughs> what you, wow. Good right. job. Well done. <laughs> Taking the initiative. Uh, all right. So let's watch this. And I haven't seen this. Have you seen? Do you watch these? I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. Have you seen this one? I have not. Well, oh. it came out November 11th. So, no, I have not. Oh, it's true. It's new. Okay, cool. So we haven't seen this. That is actually pretty crazy. How does it even work? They're... I mean, I know what it's doing, but... That is nuts, though. She should be catching it, though. She's wasting. <laughs> yeah. That's not impressive. Oh, I've seen this. These are really cool. That is quick brickwork. I think that's sped up, though. Masonry. It looks like it's sped up because the camera's moving really fast. Mm-hmm. These aren't sped up, though. I've seen tons of these. These people are just incredible. I mean, it's not much, but she's just doing it so fast. That's cool. Somebody who is just a dish person, and they take so much pride in their work. Mm -hmm. Whoa! That's really cool. Satisfied. <laughs> that was on purpose? That looks like an accident gone right. Mm-hmm. States. Is it? No. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's where all the fair toys come from, though. Yeah, that's exactly right. It takes 10 cents to make them. Uh-huh. That'd be neat. That's a satisfying machine. Oh, no. It's <laughs> dropping a tree on Justin's <laughs> neighbor's house, almost. <laughs> that's scary. Is he going to swing with it or something? No, he's on the part that's fixed. Once he cuts that, that piece will be on the, the rope. That's what you guys did at your house, right? Yeah, just with the whole tree. Oh. Whole tree. Oh, I don't like watching those. Is it scary? Yeah. Why? Because it brings back memories? Oh, terrible memories. That was such a bad day. <laughs> so glad my neighbors are awesome. sand with air being injected into it to make it liquid sand. Oh, powder coating. Hmm. Oh, I see a glass blower. That was satisfying. That's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> I would hate that job. He said throw them in the bucket too. Look at that. Oh my gosh. There's all the bad ones. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's why they don't work half the time when you buy uh -huh. them. They've yeah. already been tossed. <laughs> oh, it's good. Gunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw a video of a whole five people doing this. Yeah. And I was like, man, it was in like some European country. And I was like, man, if they only had a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it saves so much time. You know, you're not seeing any of these people from the United States. We're lazy. Technology. We're not working this hard. No. Maybe here. Probably not. No. Oh, that'd be scary. Lose a finger in that job. Yep. What is that do? Oh, it's adding threads. I haven't seen it done that way before. Hmm. What? I've seen this one. This is plywood. Plywood? This is plywood. It's going to shave it? Watch. Into sheets? Mm-hmm. Watch. Oh, this is the next part. Oh. It's plywood. It comes out plywood. Oh, gotcha. That would be cool to see. I wish they showed that. I saw that one a couple days ago. I don't think any of these are in the United States. Might mm, mm, here. The pencils, mm -hmm. probably, and that's only because of the machines doing it. Yep. We don't work hard here. We try to work smart. Yeah, but then we end up being uh, like the people in uh, Wally. -E. Have you seen that? I have. It's kind of a scary, realistic show. Could be. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's really lazy. That's USA right there. Yeah. Anyone where it's just a machine <laughs> is probably the US. But anyone where there's people actually working, not in the US. I mean, that's really cool, but... I wanted to see employees doing stuff timely and efficiently. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> machines. Here you go. Making his own hose clamp. Yep. Oh, man. Thinking outside the box. I like it. That's not in the USA. No. Satisfying, though.
Whoa, that's really cool. What are those? I don't know. They're really cool looking. Are you, those tiles? Yeah. Dry out in the sun and they become roof shingles. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Got a lot to get through, buddy. Not in America. Oh. Definitely not in America. <laughs> <laughs> Are all those those things? Uh, the last part was hay, but that first part when he was panning around, mm -hmm. I think, was. Those guys have made a lot. Hey, I'm, I'm calling in sick today. No, you're not. <laughs> no. You can do this while you're sick. Right? It's like hard to watch these videos and know that people do call out sick when they have just like a sniffle or something like that. Mm -hmm. I get nowadays you have to. I don't get that. What do you mean? But pre that, people still called out for like sniffles and all that stuff. That would scare me. That job would scare me right there. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. Nope. I feel like. Oh, nope. Fing Anything. Fingers and machines moving fast are not my thing. Nope. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm not messing with those stuff. What is that? Looks like a giant clevis hook. That bails it for you. Oh no. Nope. <laughs> nope. nope. I wonder how many accidents happen oh, each year. Oh no. Nope. Oh, there's shoes. Yep, but those fingers are right next to it. Ugh. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. And not to say it happens more in other places, but as you see a lot of people that in life are missing digits and they're I don't know they look like they're workers mm -hmm. is this candy? oh pencils it's putting on erasers <laughs> I've never seen a eraser head like that the plastic around the pencil Oh, that's again, too many moving pieces. I, I get scared. Yeah. I mean, satisfying video. Yeah. Not entirely what I thought it was going to be. It's all good. Made me feel like the United States isn't... We're lazy. <laughs> or just super smart, one of the two. Right. I think... I think those coincide. I think the you're smarter right. you get, the lazier you get, because you're mm -hmm. always trying to make things smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. Not saying they're not smart, but I think that we're just obviously. I think we have the technology to make it advanced. easier for us. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Awesome. Well, I hope that was satisfying for you. I hope we satisfied you. Uh, if we did, even if we didn't, throw a like up on this video and maybe comment down below and let us know what you thought. If uh, if you were satisfied, maybe just comment satisfied now nah, i'm done <laughs> <What>? <laughs> never there's a yeah it's a commercial like 10 years ago brady quinn used to be an nfl quarterback he goes i didn't start my workout till i finished my workout and then he drinks some stupid drink and he goes now nah, i'm done <laughs> so he do his workout and then he drinks the drink and he goes now nah, i'm done it's just stuck with me because it just brady quinn was he's just a good guy just a good solid quarterback gotcha you ever heard of him uh, the name sounds familiar, but I don't he think I've terrible. ever watched a game with he him. He was terrible. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm done. <laughs> now I'm done. Dang. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Got them all thrown off now. Yeah, you did. Just thinking about Brady Quinn. Oh man. But yeah, no, like, comment, subscribe, check us out on our podcast. If that's more your thing, we're on every platform. Uh, if you're into iHeartRadio, we're there. Amazon, there. Spotify, there. List goes on and on. And if we're not, let us know. We'll get there. 
Um, thanks for helping us grow this channel. Every view helps. But uh, if you want to help us a little more without throwing coin our way, just hit that like, comment, and subscribe. Or just hit that like and comment. Or uh, like and subscribe. And also share. Share your videos with your friends. Share it. Yeah, sharing is caring. Make fun of us with your friends. That'd be That's awesome. I, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, right. I'll take that. When does this come out? This comes out twenty second. The twenty second, so it's almost Christmas. And give the gift of sharing. Sharing, yeah, share it. If you have nothing, if you have no money, you know what? Share our video to ten thousand people. Yeah, anybody on your list where you're like, I don't have enough to get them a gift this, this is year. Worth more. This is a gift. This is the gift they didn't know they wanted mm -hmm. and need but it. They, <laughs> they need it. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, guys. Hope you had fun. We will see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.